If I had to bet whether the Tyson Fury vs. Anthony Joshua fight would happen or not, I would say no, said the Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum on Wednesday afternoon, a day after he and Fury went for an arbitration session in California, to work on mediation stemming from a proposed third bout between Fury and Deontay Wilder. On Tuesday, Aram and Fury jetted to a section of Northern California, Napa County, where the arbiter for the Fury Wilder arbitration has a property, to see if the parties involved can smooth over their differences. I asked Aram, point blank, if things could start segueing from mediation to negotiation. A switch to negotiation is possible, Aram said. But, he's still working on the summertime setup for the 32-year-old Fury to battle AJ. But he didn't seem much enthused for how the planning is going, and had some hard words for promoter Eddie Hearn, who is handling planning from the AJ side. As far as I can see this whole thing with Eddie and, a Fury vs AJ fight in Saudi Arabia, is just a mirage, Aram continued. Aram speculates that Hearn is feeling the heat because his deal with AJ is soon to expire. Eddie is desperate, he has one more fight with AJ, and he wants it to be the fight against Fury. But if a fight against Tyson is delayed, to the winter, then AJ has to fight Oleksandr Yusyk, and that's not that big a fight. Eddie is a desperado here. Q Eagles Song On Thursday, Aram told Ring, a Zoom call will be held, with Aram and Frank Warren, who with his Queensberry outfit co-promotes Fury, 30-0 with 21 Coast, and others. Eddie's out of time, Aram stated. Eddie hasn't talked to us for two weeks. Note, I emailed Hearn, as well as Shelley Finkel, repping Deontay Wilder, to see if they wanted to weigh in. Hearn responded, noting, last communication was Friday, of last week, and we had a long call with all the lawyers on Sunday. Aram says he's been made aware that Fury bestie Billy Joe Saunders, who fights Canelo on May 8 in Texas, isn't that pleased, because he feels like Hearn is favoring his deal with Canelo, as opposed to looking out for Saunders, who is under the matchroom umbrella. Two travelers talk shop and who knows what else. Fury feels like BJ could shock the world and beat Alvarez May 8. There's real animosity now, Aram said, indicating that he's not on that same page with Hearn at present time in a way that suggests Fury v Joshua will get firmed up and announced. More complications, Aram said, have to do with a proposed date, August 7. That date would mean AJ would be without lead and longtime trainer Robert McCracken, who will be helming the Great Britain squad in Tokyo at the Olympics. Aram is dubious that AJ would indeed be all good with that departure from the norm. It sounds like either this will get sorted quickly, or go entirely off the rails, and people will pivot to other plans, for the first scrap in 2021 for both Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Will I be devil damn? <laughs> Nothing surprising here. Just regular old boxing BS, man. Okay, a few things I want to talk about. Number one thing I want to talk about. Do you guys remember when Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder were getting their fight together? Do you remember how long it took them to get that fight together? It was not long at all. And Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder got on camera and both to say, look, when the best want to fight the best, these fights are easy to make. Those were Fury's words back then. You see how easy it was to make a fight with Deontay Wilder, right? You see how easy that was, right? Now, tell me, when you look at Anthony Joshua's situation, doesn't it look like Wilder all over again? Isn't that funny? See, because he said when the best want to fight the best, two fights are easy to make, okay? But Anthony Joshua seemed to have the same problem with Fury that he had with Deontay Wilder. Remember? Anthony Joshua tries to get the fight made. It's bullshit and going back and forth. Contracts, money, blase, split this, this, and that location. This is that. Anthony Joshua tried to make a fight with Fury. Contracts, back and forth, music, location. I mean, not music. Um, venues and all that other shit. Blase, split. It's the same shit. Now, if it's, if it's AJ, AJ can make a fight with everybody else. No problem, for the most part, until it comes with the money. Everybody dick around with the money. But please know how they say when the best want to fight the best, the fights are easily made. We all know that Anthony Joshua wants this fight. Tyson Fury is doing the same thing that Deontay Wilder. The same things are happening. The, the, you know what I'm saying? And it's possibly this will go the same way Deontay Wilder 
Anthony Joshua went. Okay. Another thing that I want you to notice, please notice, do you find it ironic that both fighters tried to put a time limit on Anthony Joshua? Same thing with the 50,000, sign this contract, uh, do it right now, agree to it, and you only got 24 hours. The same thing Shelly Finkel did, okay? It's the same thing Tink Fury doing right now. Look, you need to do this, you need to get back with me ASAP. If not, we're going to explore the options, we're going to go fight Wilder. It's the same shit. So when it comes to you wild air fans talking that 50, uh, that 50 may shut up, shut up. Because now it's proven in real time. It's always you guys. It's not him. You guys hold up the fight. Okay. As you see with Tyson Fury talking all that shit, the best fight, the best. And these fights are easy to make. Yet it's getting drug out just like Wilder. How ironic. You know what I'm saying? Same thing happens when he try to fight Ortiz, when he try to fight anybody. Y'all all do the same shit. Period. But everybody want to try. Everybody want to try to say, oh, AJ's a coward. He's running. He's scared. Listen, no intelligent person believes that shit. None. The other thing is this. Once again, I'm very disappointed with boxing from a lot of, for a lot of reasons, you know, and I will voice those reasons. But one thing I don't like is people will constantly, and I'm talking about constantly on Twitter or internet, people will constantly keep Al Heyman's name in their mouth. As he's the man is fucking up boxing. I have my gripes with Al Hain. But one thing that I don't like. Is there somebody out here. That's 10 and 9 times worse. Than Al Heyman. As a matter of fact. Al Heyman and Eddie Hearn can get fights made with each other. They've done it. Eddie Hearn has said how easy it is to work with Al Heyman's team. What's aggravating to me is. Why don't anybody give Bob Arum the same reputation and flack that you give Al Heyman? Because if you notice, nobody can get a deal done with Bob fucking Arum. It's the same damn thing. Money's always an issue. Pacquiao Crawford. Money issue. Teofimo Lopez uh, Vasily Lomachenko. Money issue. Mikey Garcia. Money issue. Um... Tyson Fury and Anthony Josh, money issue. He has a problem with at any fight that he's involved in. Where's the money? Where's this? Where's the venue? Oh, we can't do that. There's no money. He says this it's the problem with Bob Arum time and time and time and time again. You can't get no fights made with this guy because number one, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the reputation. Or the proper decor to get these things done. Because he has a problem with everybody. Talk about Eddie Hearn like a dog. Talk about Al Heyman like a dog. Talk about anybody else that's in by. Talk about Dana White like a dog. You know what I'm saying? This and that. And nobody wants to do business with him. He can't do business with anybody. One of his top fighters, he's finna fucking lose. Because he can't do business with anybody. So on top of it's. You know what I'm saying? On top of the bullshit going on, you got Bob M, one of the most persons who fucked up more fights than a little bit. That's that's the truth. A lot of these fights you don't get made not because of what's going on at PBC or what's going on there. Bob M don't want to bow down to nobody. He wants the biggest piece of everything. He says, I'm the oldest guy on the block. You know what I'm saying? You guys are the newbies. Y'all gonna bow down to me. Y'all gonna do what I say. And if not, I'm too old to give a fuck. And I don't care what the fuck happened to my fighter's uh, career. Haven't you tell by my history? That's Bob Aaron, man. So number one, we got the wrong person doing business with Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Bob fucking Aaron. Fucking horrible. Period. The dude is horrible. So, you got the same thing going on with Wilder and Tyson Fury going on right now with Tyson Fury 
and Anthony Joshua. Both times, big money is on the table. Both of them are procrastinating and talk about doing other things. Remember, this is the same way. This is the same way Deontay Wilder was talking. Fuck Anthony Joshua. It's all about Wilder, Tyson, Fury. Now Fury's like, fuck Anthony Joshua. It's it's always about uh, Fury, Wilder. Can't you see the patterns? It, they're literally doing the same thing that Team Wilder did, and now Team Fury is doing it. But everybody claims Anthony Joshua is the one holding shit up. Just look at all the things that I named. The money, the excuses, the time limit. You only got a day. You only, uh, 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 you only got a week. Uh, we have a venue issues. It's the exact same prototype of problems. Look at it. You can hold them up side by side. Matter of fact, if you stack them up on top of each other, they will blend. It's the exact same thing. It's utterly ridiculous. It really is. But at this point, what else can I say about box? What else can I say? We don't got a lot of fights. All right. We have little fights that we look forward to. And if anybody know anything about me, if there's a fight that I'm interested in, I will stay on that fight until the fight happens. I will hope that it grows. I will hope that it, it, it becomes something. And I will say, just like Teofimo Lopez and Lomachenko, I wanted that fight bad as hell. I wanted it bad as hell because I knew. I was saying the fight when the fight wasn't popular to say that this is the fight that you want to fucking see. Oh, that fight's not going to happen. That fight, all right, all right. But, but you see, I stayed on it. All the way, and I seen it through all the way to the end. Because I felt that strongly about Teofimo Lopez and what I knew that he could do. You know, that's why I picked him to do the Rising Love series. Anyways, digress. You know, it's the same thing with this, except I'm giving y'all my energy and I'm stepping out. Giving y'all energy and I'm stepping out. Because boxing don't deserve to get all of my energy like that. Because whether we like it or not, when we talk and have these conversations... We are helping promote. Whether people like whether it's negative or positive, we are helping promote. That's why I'm very selective on what I talk on now. Because whether I talk about you negatively or I talk about you positive, I'm promoting you. That's why certain people don't get talked about on this channel no more. Because I'm not promoting no bullshit. But nonetheless, I just had to bring those comparisons up so we once again can analyze how much these guys are bullshitting in boxing. This is why the boxing industry don't like people like Teofimo Lopez. This is why the boxing industry don't like people like Anthony Joshua. You guys are trying to operate the old school way. Actually trying to put in work, gaining and stuff like that. They figured out a long time ago that the old school way of the best, fighting the best and stuff like that, that don't make the most money. But at the same time, you lose ultimately because you don't give the fans what they want. This is why UFC is superior at this point you notice their fans never argue about the fights that they want to see they're never left in suspense like we're left in suspense they're never left in the dark like we're left in the dark they're never told this contract is signed then a week later they tell you the contract is not signed it doesn't happen the biggest thing that they have is fighters pulling out the last minute and needing replacements but they should have mastered that by now but they get everything that they want. I think for the most part, every other person that has some kind of sport, they get whatever they want. We are the only ones who is treated by our sport like a stepchild. Okay? We the ones treated like a throwaway. We the ones that's treated like jump offs. You know what I'm saying? Boxing thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Nobody takes us serious. Nobody cares what we want. It's a damn shame, man. I'm out.